is Jessica Picard. I'm the Communications Manager with the Maine Department of Labor. The Maine Department of Labor can help you with a variety of employment needs, such as finding a job, connecting with training, helping employers find employees, um, as well as helping when a job is lost through unemployment insurance, keeping people safe on the job, and making sure that people have fair workplaces. If you're interested in anything you hear about today, please uh, look us up on www.maine.gov slash labor. Hi there, folks. Um, my name is Ann Smith, and I represent uh, Africans United and Project Bazir, mutually supporting education for new arrivals to the state of Maine. And this is the first of a series of programs that we're going to be filming at uh, Portland Media Center. And um, we're talking about how do you go out and get a job? And we were surprised when we started asking that question a lot of different places to find out that the best source of information is already right there, here in the state of Maine. And so my guest today is from the Bureau of Employment Services under the Department of Labor, and her name is Kim Moore. And she and I are going to be chatting about what kind of services they can offer you to help you find a job. Great. Thank right. you. Kim. Nice it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I went to the site and I was overwhelmed. I think I, I mentioned this when we did our before interview interview. And um, something called Maine Career Center seems to be the place to start. And then I asked you about them, and it turns out there are a lot more than your website's even going to tell me. So what can you tell us about the Maine Career Centers, how they started, and what they're becoming? Awesome. Sounds good. Um, so thank you so much. It's really great to hear wonderful things about our career centers. Um, Though it's never great to hear that we're a well-kept secret. We're trying to change that. Well, I hope we help. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so um, career centers, which are American job centers, they're known nationwide. Um, they provide free help to job seekers and employers. And it helps them connect with uh, career unemployment services, any kind of need that they might have to get them either to their first job, their next job, or a brand new job. OK, can we, can we break that down sure. a little bit into steps? Um, um, because I think when you say it'll help you what you need to get there, my audience doesn't even know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I, I'm someone who also, when I went back, after I retired from teaching, who went back to apply for other jobs, was overwhelmed by the fact that I couldn't get a job the way I used to uh, 35 years ago which was going into the store or calling a number from an advertisement I saw in the newspaper. Um, navigating a website and navigating the internet to find jobs can be very challenging. So uh, is that something you can help me do? Absolutely. Yep. Um, so we're really happy to be that kind of frontline presence where people, that they walk into our centers, that they call us on the phone or a live chat, they can ask us a question like What's that. What's a live chat? Live chat, go on our website and a chat box pops up and you can just type oh, in. Oh, they did that, I thought it was an ad. <laughs> no, it looks like a pop-up, but hopefully it's a little more welcoming than a pop-up. But okay. yeah, type in your information and we can, you'll be talking to one of our career center consultants right there and you can ask all the questions you'd like to. What's this gonna cost me? Absolutely nothing. All of our services and programs are at no cost to people. Why? Uh, we are very lucky to be both federally and state funded. So these are programs and services that exist either nationwide or were developed by the state of Maine. Okay. So I, I go on a site and it tells me that the first thing I have to do is fill out this long complicated application or I have to attach my resume. I mean, I'll be honest with you, in some ways, I'm a lot like my clientele from Africa. I know just about as much about this whole job hunting thing as they do, and it's part of its age. Yeah. So how can you help me? Yeah. A lot of individuals who come to the career centers are looking for that kind of help. Um, and that's one of the primary services that we provide. So you come in, you talk to one of my people one-on-one, -on -one, we figure out where you want to start, where you want to end. Often it's, I need to apply for a job today. So we hop over to the computers, because you're absolutely right, most of the applications are going to be online today. We do have some employers who love uh, just you know a, a slide of the resume or a, a really nice direct referral, 
but most of the jobs are going to be applied for online. So if you don't have your resume ready or if you don't feel like um, maybe it's what um, U.S. employers are really looking for, maybe it doesn't really describe your skills and experience, we can help you with that. We can help you write or revise your resume. And then when you're ready, we not only can help you fill out that application, but we can help you attach the resume to make sure that it's complete when you send it off. Wow. And you can help me figure out what kind of um, jobs or careers. I've heard that word used both ways. And I went to the trouble of finding out what the difference is. Um, because a job is employment that you get just because you want money. Usually it doesn't have a plan for future in it. I mean, I'm sure that when I um, worked briefly at a McDonald's, one summer while I was going to college, I really wasn't thinking about managing a McDonald's someday. So that was a job, mm -hmm. right? Uh, whereas a career is something um, a little more ongoing. Can you help me clarify my thinking on that? Absolutely. So jobs will usually uh, add survival to them. So there's something that, just like you said, I need it right now because I need a paycheck. So I need something to sustain me and my family and maybe that's going to hold me over for a while. Maybe I am at working at McDonald's and my goal is to be a manager and so that becomes part of my career pathway. Um, or maybe I want to change careers. Maybe I'm working at McDonald's but really truly I want to be a carpenter and that's really where I want to go. Um, so then again our conversations with individuals who uh, whether they want to work at McDonald's or whether they want to tra uh, completely change their careers it's our job to help them um, get transitioned to that next step and support them on that pathway. I can see where I want to go. I want to be a carpenter. But even before I get there, I'm worried that they're going to not understand me when I go in and even apply for a job. Um, are there some things that I should be doing to get ready before I even go and apply in terms of um, talking to people. Um, I, I'm assuming that, uh, I mean, I've been here for five years. My English is good enough, but will it be good enough for a job interview? Yeah. And that's something that we, we work with uh, ourselves. So we do a lot of mock interviews, so we can guide and coach you on the language of a of US interview. Um, but we also can work really closely with our partners over at Adult, adult Education, um, other other pro uh, providers that can uh, provide classes either that are really focused on learning job skills and using the language of work or that are just basic English. Um, so we really like to make sure that we're partnering with those folks um, and connecting to the resources that they have. In my work with refugees I've run into a number of young people who finished high school and got their diploma uh, and then went right out and got um, some kind of a job, not really a career. And in many cases, um, they didn't really think about the whole idea of career until someone grabbed them and said, well, you should be going to college. I, I don't want to go back to school. Um, I'd like to have a, I'd like to work at something where I can make more money than just a job at McDonald's, but I, I don't want to go to school anymore. How can you help? How can uh, the Career Center help me with that? So probably one of my best recommendations for that one would be a registered apprenticeship program. Um, so that's where individuals, it's, it could be in the trades, so it could be that carpenter we were talking about, or an electrician, a plumber, pipe fitter, but it also can be somebody who's work, who wants to work in marketing or finance or um, aquaculture, it's one of our newest ones. Um, so it's in lots of broad fields and it integrates both that training and learning on the job, paid learning on the job. So our registered apprentices are employees of the companies that they're uh, apprentices in. They have mentors there to help coach and guide them in gaining the skills that are needed to actually work in that field. Wow, that's very exciting. Uh, is it a very limited field? I mean, there are only a few positions open for things mm -hmm. like that? No, uh, if you go on the website, the Career Center website, um, the main apprenticeship program has probably one of our strongest pages. And you can see that, gosh, I think we have about 180 or so employers that they're, we're currently partnered with and who are, um, when they have positions available, they're offering registered apprenticeship opportunities. 
I have, well, that's something we did in Africa, you know. We had apprenticeships in Africa, but it was not at that big a scale and no central place to find out who was offering them. You usually had to contact somebody else who knew somebody else who knew somebody else. But that sounds like a good idea. Um, what if I go there and, and, and uh, what if there isn't an apprenticeship, though, for the field I want to go into, but, but I think I can do it? Um, is there any way I can go to school and not just be spending money that I don't have <laughs> for two or three years while I get the training? Yep, absolutely. If training is the answer, if that's what, what we need to start you on that career pathway, there are lots of programs that can help pay for that tuition. Um, or they can help pay for the other things that you might need to be able to go to school. So tools, equipment, steel toe boots because you are going to be a carpenter. Um, it can help you with um, things like transportation, childcare, the things that might get in your way of either starting or completing that credential. Okay, um, these career centers, where are they? So we have 13 located statewide from top to bottom of the state. But I tell you, you don't have to go to a career center to find us. We learned during the pandemic that not only could we provide our services, a lot of our services virtually, so we could use live chat, we could do Zoom calls to help coach and guide and give you our best advice. Um, we could help you over the telephone. But we also learned that we've got a lot of partners out in the community who welcome us. So we're at about 50 libraries statewide right now, so either weekly, monthly, um, they're doing a really nice job of making sure that people know when we're going to be there. We also go to food pantries, general assistance, anywhere that welcomes us, we make sure that our outreach, outreach workers are there connecting with people because that's where they're at. How, how would I know that I was talking to somebody from your agency? Yeah. Say if I was sitting at uh, a GA, you know, waiting for my mm -hmm. number to come up. We love our tables and our handouts. So you'll almost always see that Career Center logo with a red swoop on it. You'll probably see somebody with a badge like me um, that identifies them as being Department of Labor. Um, and you'll see lots and lots of handouts and brochures because we want to make sure that you walk away with the information that you need and the next steps. So this is the beginning of finding a job. I mean, what if it doesn't work out? Mm -hmm. um, are you going to be there to help Absolutely. me if something happens and I really don't like this career I chose? Absolutely. Uh, how does that work? Yep. You walk in. Simply walk in. It didn't work out, no problem. I always like to joke that um, if we were, were really doing our jobs well, we'll never see you again. But that's where I want to see you again. If it just didn't work out, if it wasn't right, the right pathway for you, our staff want to see you come back and they want to try to help you find whatever the next best step is. Things happen. Things get in your way, and if that gets in your way, whether that's going to stop and make you pivot and go to another direction, or whether it's going to just halt you for a while, we're there to help you create that next plan. M my older sister had a really good job, and then she got pregnant, mm -hmm. and she didn't go back to work mm -hmm. after the baby was born because she couldn't find anybody to help her take care of the baby. Uh, you help with something like that? Sure. Um, so if the individual wants to go back, your sister would like to go back to work after uh, that experience, um, then we can work with them to do things like, let's say training's not something that, uh, that they're looking for. Um, we can help connect them to programs and services that might help with what we call a work experience. So that's a paid experience where you we partner with an employer to give you some experience on the job. Let's say you wanted to do something in an office, you want to do something clerical. But maybe you haven't done that for seven years. This will give you an opportunity to prove yourself and to have something to put on your resume because you're going to have a pretty big gap. Um, so we're trying to work with you to make sure that you have something to write on there. You have references, and now you're gold. Now you're ready to either work at that organ or that organization or employer, or to sell yourself to another one. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit more about this. These virtual sites are are they all in English? Ah, uh, good question. So we are required because of our funding sources and because it's the right thing to do to provide all of our services um, in any language that's requested. Um, so when you walk into our career centers, you'll see a sign that's in, goodness, I don't even know how many languages um, that will um, that you can point to and we'll, that will cue us to uh, reach out to our language line. Um, and that will be able to, we'll be able to talk through the interpreter to make sure that we're understanding um, what you're looking for and how to best connect you. 
It seems like, though, that being able to speak English can really stop you dead in your tracks. I have, a, um, I have an uncle who was a, um, he was a doctor in, in Africa, and uh, he came here, and he had lots of school from there, and um, he just couldn't get anywhere in a job that even came close to what he was doing in Africa. Could you help someone like him? So yeah, I mean, one of the things that we really want to try to do is figure out where they are in their English. Um, there are some fields like IT where um, the language is actually, it's the technical language. So some individuals um, who maybe aren't as strong in English have their occupation kind of taught them a different language, a programming language. Okay. Um, so those can be a little bit easier to translate quite literally translate yes. and then to prove that you have those skills and abilities to an employer. That's right. Others, a little bit harder. Um, so healthcare, that one can be one of one of our more challenging ones. Um, but what we do is try to work with individuals to figure out what's the highest level that we can get you into. So for, um, for your uncle, uh, who is a doctor, um, we might work with, say, Portland Adult Education to figure out what level of English he might be starting at. Um, and figure out what that first, that best first step is, if he wants to stay in healthcare. Or we can talk to him about some um, opportunities to use, we call them transferable skills. So lots of skills that he had to use as a doctor. There are plenty of occupations that use those skills and value those skills, and he might be very interested in. So he wouldn't feel like he had to go and learn to cook in a fast food mm -hmm. restaurant yeah. in order to support his family. Exactly. Um, yeah. uh, what about a physical disability? Mm -hmm. uh, is, the, is, that a, is that a real challenge? Depends on what the job is that people are looking for. If a f job requires a lot of physicality or a lot of, um, you have trouble with your hands and, and you have, um, it, that's gonna be a barrier to your work, um, then we would uh, make sure that we talk to you about our friends over or sister department uh, or bureau over at the Bureau of Rehabilitative Services. And they're specialized in helping individuals whose uh, disabilities are a barrier to work. Um, they help and coach, guide, support them into entering to those careers. What if I don't even know what I want to do? But my mom says if I don't get a job, she's going to kick <laughs> me out. And I'm 35. You're my favorite person. <laughs> I love it when you walk through the door. Um, so th those are some of the most fun conversations, um, depending on why you're there. If your mom sent you there, then maybe you don't love seeing us, but you got to spend an hour with us, but we'll make it relatively entertaining. Um, so we like to do some career assessments. We like to um, put you on a computer if, if that's what you want to do. Um, and we have you say, uh, I've, always, I've never wanted to be um, an architect. I don't know what an architect is. I don't even want to do that, but hmm, I do like working with my hands. And so we go through some uh, career assessments that might help point us in the right direction. And once it starts pointing us in that direction, we can talk to you about some of the opportunities and then what does that career pathway look like? Where might you want to enter? Are you interested in training? Do you want to go straight into a job? And where might that connect? Are there any groups of individuals you can't help? And this is kind of a funny question, but I mean, some of us are having trouble getting permission to work in this country. Yeah, yeah, and it is true that some of our programs and services are limited to individuals who have work, uh, work authorization. However, most of what I've talked about today, except unfortunately for a lot, some of the employment and training programs, we're here to help. So we're help, here to help you while you're waiting for your work authorization to start thinking about and training for, even training for some of those occupations. Again, we're, we're kind of a hub of activity. We, we know a lot. Um, so we talk a lot with our partners and programs at adult education, the Maine Community College System. A lot of those right now, again, thanks uh, through uh, Maine Jobs or Recovery Plan funding, they're no cost and often they don't have a requirement uh, for work authorization. So you can get connected to training, you can get some coaching and guidance, go to our workshops. We'll do everything that we can, short of a job, um, in order to get you ready for when you do get that work authorization. You must find this, uh, are you fairly new at this position? I got that feeling from talking to yes. other people. <laughs> you used to do something else in Portland. Would you I mind did. sharing that uh, with the audience? Because some sure. of them may recognize you. They 
hopefully will, I hope they do. Um, so I used to be with the Greater Portland Workforce Initiative, uh, which is about 21 different programs and services um, in Greater Portland, um, who were doing exactly this, trying to make sure that we were all working together without anybody noticing that we had to work together, um, really, really, call it seamlessly. So nobody could see what we were doing behind the scenes, um, but really trying to make sure that we were supporting individuals like uh, immigrants, refugees, asylum seekers, um, to get to the points, the places they wanted to get. So I've been around the block for a while. Okay. <laughs> um, it, you said at the beginning that it bothered you that I said this was a best kept secret. I, I am connected with a number of um, nonprofits and, and foundations, and including the Welcome, the Greater Portland Welcoming Center. Yep. I'm not sure I've seen anything from your career center up in there. So I'm going to. Uh, Thank you. Are you connected <laughs> with with Reza? Yes, uh, we actually um, we actually have just hired one of his uh, close friends, Tarlin Amadov, who used to. Oh, uh, I know Tarlin. Yes, yes, he's a very <laughs> a wonderful person. Um, so yes, um, we do partner with the Immigrant Welcome Center. Hopefully, our materials are in there, and if they're not, I we're haven't have been a in for a while, Reza. so it's, it's okay. possible. It's possible. <laughs> no problem at all. Okay. Well, Kim. Um, I hope you're enjoying your position here, and I, I know you come to it equipped with a lot of information from your career in Portland. Um, we may be contacting you again if there's a detail that we think we've overlooked, but all of this information is going to be made available um, uh, through the through this program, we're going to be putting the co how to contact main career centers up frequently. And uh, I know I'm going to feel more informed when I talk to the refugees and uh, newcomers that I work with. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, so long for now. <laughs>